In this video, we're going to talk about the Smith's Level 1 Infuser. This is a machine that's used to rapidly infuse warm fluid of any kind. So that might be saline or it might be blood products. Lots of people get nervous about the Level 1 because it looks like quite an intimidating piece of kit. But keep it simple, just remember that the machine itself is just a very big drip stand with a few extra parts and the giving set that goes into it is essentially just a giving set, it's just longer than a normal one and again it has a few extra parts that we put into the drip stand but that's all, it is still just a giving set like you would use every day in your normal practice. Okay so let's have a look at the machine. Um, at the top it's got just standard drip hooks. I tend to put my next bags of fluid that I'm ready to use on them so that the, I know they're close by me. Um, then as you move down you've got two pressure chambers. Um, they just open up from the side. Um, they have got their own hooks for um, your fluid bags, so a thousand mil of saline would hook on the top one, a sort of 250 bag of blood would be the bottom or the second to the bottom one. Um, when you have the machine, machine switched on and you put your pressure on, it just you move from the negative to the positive. So you would just move this bar across um, and it will come into the green up here and it fills this back bit, pushes out against your fluid bag. As we move further down, this is where your heat exchanger is going to fit into. That's on your given set and we'll discuss that in a second. And this is where your air filter is going to fit into. This bit here is your water and what's going to heat your um, fluid up as you put it in. You've got your on switch and an off switch. This tests your alarms. And up here you've got what your temperature is and um, your lights for if the, if the machine's not working properly it will be coded to one of these alarms and we'll talk through them at the end as well. The machine is quite large and quite cumbersome. It's on wheels so if you do need to move it around you can and you can pop the brakes on as well for when you want it to stay still. So next we'll have a look at the giving set. Okay so this is our giving set. They come in fairly big boxes. Um, it explains the parts on one side and if you forget how to um, put it into the machine, it explains that on the other side. As far as I know, Smith & Nephew actually make about four varieties of giving set. This is the DI50, um, so just check which set you've got in your trust. If we open it up. So it comes out in a um, plastic package and you'll get some instructions and safety manual with it as well. Then if you open your plastic, and like I said earlier, it's essentially just a very large giving set. So if we open it out, at the top end, you've got two spikers to spike your fluid bag with, and the key parts are covered. Under that, you've got two pinch clamps, so we'll close those off, like we would with any giving set that we was getting ready to prime. Then you've got an injection port, then you've got your drip chamber. Under there, there's a roller clamp, so we'll roll that one down. And then there's just a fixer, make sure that that's securely screwed so it doesn't come off. The next bit that you've got is your heat exchanger, so this is the big long blue bit. This is where your fluid is, is going to warm as it travels through it. Another pinch clamp below that. Then you've got your gas um, exchanger, so like you would have on a normal blood giving set where you have the extra chamber to allow the air to filter out it has that and it also has this orange bit at the top which is another safety bit where it'll let air out of the top below that you've got another pinch clamp another connector so screw that in tight and then if you undo your paper and then you've got your line to your patient which again has another roller clamp so we just roll that one down another injection part and then your patient connector at the end. So it's very long, it's got lots of pinch clamps on it, but it is just a giving set, that's all. Shall we have a look now at how we prime it and connect it into the machine? Okie dokie, so let's have a look at how we would prime the line. So if we take our giving set, it does get a little bit fingers and thumbs when you're trying to do this. 
And remember, you would be doing it under a A and T T technique and not touching your key parts. For the purpose of this video, um, I've just got a 250 bag of saline that's got some dye in it. Um, normally, you would probably use blood, but it, it's just because we're doing the film. If you have the time, it's best if you can remove the air out of your bags first. If you just draw it out with a, a sort of 20 mil syringe or something like that. It reduces the risk of you putting air into the patient because this machine um, can put fluid through really fast. So it can probably put a litre bag of saline through in about four minutes. So I've spiked my bags. I'd turned all my clamps off earlier and now I can put them into my pressure chambers. Just be careful when you close the doors that you don't have any of the fluid bag trapped because when it pressurises um, it, it might explode. So make sure that it's actually sat on the right hook and in the right part of the chamber. Once you've got them bits in, next you're going to put your heat exchanger into the device. So it has a number one down here and a number two up here. What you want to do is push the end firmly into the number one. Everything about this machine is stiff, so don't be frightened of it. Push hard into things. Okay, and then clip it back. And then section two pushes down. Again, you've got to be really firm with it. I usually have to do it with two hands. you'll hear a really tiny click when you've got it in place. After that, your air filter goes in slot three down here. And again, you just push it back. Orange bit always goes to the top, but you'll know because your line's all going in one direction. Some newer machines have another bit that just sits at the side here where you would hook this part of your line into. And this bit is going to go to your patient. So. Let me just get that out of the way for a second. So if I'm going to start priming the line, what I'm going to do is open one side first and the liquid will start to come in. Open the other side, it'll start to fill slightly and then I'm going to squeeze to fill my drip, tra drip chamber to about halfway. And then the next bit that I'm going to do is uh, open the next roller clamp fully. So this is now letting the fluid into the heat exchanger. I'm going to open the pinch clamp below the heat exchanger, allow that to run through. It does always carry a lot of air with it, but it's going into the next filter. So that'll allow that air to come out. So we'll just give it a minute. Then open my pinch clamp below my gas cylinder. And then I'm moving on to my patient one which is right at the end here. So this is the last roller clamp that I'm going to undo and just slowly let it run to the end of the line and then roll it off once I've arrived there. Okay, again, I'm going to double check my line because I don't want to have got any air bubbles in it. So I just have a quick look from the top, and work my way down, make sure that I haven't got any air in the line. Okay, that's as easy as it is to set up, it is just a big giving set. That's all you've got to remember. Again, follow your processes methodically and you'll get to where you want to be. Okay, at this point, I'm safe to connect to the patient. So if we imagine that that's connected to our patient, and then what I'm gonna do is switch the machine on. So it is quite noisy when you switch it on. It's the green button to turn on. Okay. What it'll start doing is coming up to heat, which is this bit here. You want it to get to about 40 degrees. You also, at this point, are gonna start to pressurize your bags. At the minute, the only thing that's stopping this flowing is this one roller clamp down here. What I would advise is, before you pressurize your bags, to switch off your pinch clamps at the top. So that one off, 
take that one off and then you can start to pressurise your bag. So we just switch this bit on and we would switch this bit on. So for the purpose of the rest of the video, just because this is quite loud, I'm going to switch the machine off, but I'll carry on explaining through as if it was still switched on. So in real life, you wouldn't switch the machine off at this point. Once I've switched them on, it's best if you run one bag at a time. If you try to run two bags at once, you're very likely that you're gonna get air in this line and then you're stuck or, and you'll have to reset it or you're gonna get air to the patient. Um, I would generally open this pinch clamp, leave this one closed, and then I would open my roller clamp to my patient. I'm gonna watch this bag go through when it comes near the end, I'm going to close the pinch clamp. I'm going to open this pinch clamp and again, let it flow through to my patient. And at that point, I'm going to look to change this bag. So that's when I was saying earlier that I'd have another set of, another bag of blood up here. I'm going to be taking that one off, depressurizing, opening my door, and I can put a fresh bag of blood on. Close the door again repressurize, get everything ready, and this bag of blood should be about finished by then. Close this pinch clamp, open this one. So although I've got two bags hooked up, it's much easier to run one at a time. You won't be able to leave this machine once you've got it going, because like I say, it goes so fast, and what you don't want to do is put potentially, probably 50 to 100 mils of air would go into this line. You don't want to put that through your patient. So you, you are stuck with this machine once it's going. You can't do anything else. Okay, so if I switch the machine back on, so green foot on, we'll talk through some of the alarms this time. So it's going to be a little bit noisy, but it's just so I can demonstrate them for you. I won't be able to demonstrate them all, but I'll do what I can whilst it's on. So it, this swirly looking symbol and the green light at the top means that we're all good to go. When your machine's working correctly, that green light will be on. The next symbol down is when there's a piece of your giving set not connected into the machine correctly. So that might be that your gas exchange at the bottom is sat just slightly forward and if I pull it out, you'll hear it alarm. Okay, so you get a beeping noise and you get an orange flashing light next to this symbol. As soon as I rectify it and push it back in, the beeping stops. Green light comes back on to say that we're good to go. The two most likely things that will cause that problem are because you've not pushed your gas, uh, gas cylinder in far enough, or the one that I come across the most is that people haven't pushed this part of the heat exchanger down forcefully enough. The other thing that you'll find with that, if it's slightly up, is you'll also get a water leak from around the edge, which is your, your water out of your machine coming from around the edge. It won't be the blood out of your giving set, it'll be the actual heated water coming through this. So it'll be dripping and it'll be alarming at you. You just need to push it down firmly, okay? The other alarms, I can't simulate for you at the minute, but I can talk them through. So I'll switch the machine off again so it's a bit quieter and I'll tell you what they'll look like, okay? So orange for off, machine goes off. This symbol here, which is the third one down, this is when you've not got enough water in your um, chamber down here. So there isn't enough water to generate the heat to heat the um, blood products that you're trying to put through. As you can see, it's got a min level and a maximum level. It should be at the maximum level all the time. If you need to fill it up, you need to use distilled water because what you don't want to get is a mineral buildup in the machine because it will break it. So you just pop this plug off the top and you can fill through that hole and then you just pop the plug back on and you're good to go. The last symbol that you might see is this bottom one, which looks like it's got a thermometer next to it. And that will be when your heat is either too low or too high, more than likely when it's gone too high. So this machine works best around between 40 to 42 degrees. 
it will go up to 43.95. As soon as it gets over that, it will start to alarm and say it's too hot and you can't use it at that point. It's too hot to go into your patient. So it's, it's out of use then. If it's too low, say it's around 37, 38 degrees, you would still be able to use it. Just remember that it's not at its optimum heat for your patient. Um, so they will be getting warmed fluid, but it's not as good as it could be. However, you, you can't fix that one yourself. So if it's not heating to temperature or it's going over temperature, it needs to go back to medical engineers or back to the manufacturer to have that looked at. They're the only three alarms that you'll get on this machine. And um, if anything else goes wrong with it, if it's not switching on, anything like that, it's a manufacturer's fault or you need to get your medical engineers to come down and have a look at it, okay? So the last thing that I wanted to show you is how fast this machine will actually put fluid through. I know we said earlier that it can do a litre in about four minutes, but let's set it going and you can see how fast these bags empty. So we'll switch back on. We've been on a couple of times, so we're coming up to temperature nice and quick. I'm gonna open one pinch clamp on this side and then I'm all pressurized, I'm going to open my roller clamp to my patient. Okay, so at this point I need to be watching the fluid line and getting ready to close that clamp again. So close that one there, open this clamp, let my second bag in, start changing this over for another bag of blood. So remember you haven't got long to get that bag of blood ready, so have them out, be ready for them, because you also need to be keeping your eye on this fluid line so that you can pinch it off when you need to. Okay, so I've managed to stop them both without getting any air in the line so I can reuse this giving set. If I get air in the line, I have to start again. You'd have to set your giving set up again from the beginning or you're gonna have to drain the fluid that's in it out and start again. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you found it useful. As always, remember to have a look at what you've got in your area because every trust stocks slightly different kit.